Hey everybody, welcome back to the basement. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be doing some scenic work. I'm thinking of creating some different playlists for my channel that are that are just like layout updates, train running, and maybe some scenery work, like Chris's scenery shop or something like that. It would all be on this channel, but like a different playlist. So this is going to be part of that playlist of just scenery work. And I've got on the upper level of the layout, back over here, I have a Woodland Scenics farmhouse that I got a couple months ago, and it's really just been sitting up there. I also have the Woodland Scenics Red Barn and a little pasture with some cows and some hay bales. That's been there for a while, but the house has just kind of just been sitting on plywood. I haven't done anything with it. So I'm going to be working on that today, and I'm going to bring you along for the ride. You're going to see from the foundation to doing the sculpt and mold for some elevation changes in the landscaping, all the way through, we're going to be using scenic, or excuse me, we're going to be using static grass today, which is new for me. I'm not, I've, I've got, I've dabbled in static grass here and there. I have a static grass applicator. I just never get it to look the way I really like it. And it never looks as good as I feel like it does in other people's YouTube videos. But we're going to take a stab at it today. We're also going to, be doing, going to be doing a dirt lane. We're going to be working on a truck, a farmhouse truck for this that we're going to weather as well. It's all part of this whole video. So stay tuned to watch the, how I've created that. You've probably seen the finished product in the thumbnail. That's what we're going to get to. So Stay tuned. I really appreciate you watching. Uh, if you're not, hit that subscribe button while the intro rolls. Hit that like button because it's going to be a great video. Appreciate you. Let's go. Here's what we're working on. So at this point, I've already cut out some wood and I've fixed it or screwed it down to the sub base of the layout. So what I basically did was measured out the, the house, which is here. And then I cut out a piece of half inch plywood scrap that I had. And then you saw, see I've added another piece here. And then this is gonna be the driveway. So this is just some scrap masonite that I've had. I've cut into a curve, put some down in here for support. And then what I'm going to do is sculpt the mold this to make this all blend together. So this is the road or the driveway. Here's the roadway here. So this is going to kind of curve up and then you'll have a little space here, a side yard that we can have like a farm truck or something, whatever. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix up some sculpt mold in the back with some paint, just basically just dump some latex paint in there, mix it up with some gloves. And then we're going to put that on here and fill in all the, these areas and just make it blend together. The barn is also on a piece of half inch ply also. And the reason I do that is just to give the layout a little bit more dimension. So if I come down here, you can see where it blends together. And what it does is it just adds a little bit of elevation change. So you're not just constantly on, you know, plywood planes with some ground foam over top. It just adds a little bit more dimension to your layout, which I think is always a you know what we're going for. So we're going to get some sculpt and mold out. We'll blend it all together. By mixing it with the paint, it just adds a, a brown base to it. And it's going to be more of a lighter brown because you're mixing it with the white sculpt and mold. But it, it just, a, you know, it, it gets you a little bit further ahead of the game. So putting sculpt and mold down, then having to paint that, we just kind of kill two birds with one stone and we can begin to maybe add ground cover or we might still need to add a little bit more latex paint to it uh, at the end. We'll just have to kind of wait and see. So I'm going to go do that. We'll come back and start putting that on. So I've got my sculpt the mold is mixed here. I'm just going to wear a latex glove. Try to put this in a place so it's not in the way of the camera. And what I'm going to do is just kind of grab it. We're just going to throw it on here and blend that basin this over here just like that fill in the, some of those gaps and just create that contour for driveway and then the foundation as well you can make it as steep or as flat as you want obviously you're just gonna need more sculpt mold or you can add some more if you have scrap wood like I have here it's kind of a filler so it's gonna kind of hold that up you know I'm not gonna be standing probably here ever to work on the layout to have a pop-up in the middle so I don't need this to be structurally 
sound that it can hold up me, it just needs to hold the scenery, especially since it's right here by the edge of the layout. So I'm gonna make sure I get it in the screws there for the driveway. We want that to be nice and smooth. We're gonna make that like a dirt, a dirt lane. I'm gonna blend it in here at the end of the driveway also. The sculpt mold is gonna allow this to be, you know, it's gonna be textured as well, which is nice. But the brown, you know, sometimes you get some of that white will show through if you as you start to apply your ground effects and ground foams. So by doing it the brown here, it's gonna help us out. Now I've got some over here uh, on my road, that's okay. Because that's all gonna be blended in later on. So just like when I did my tunnel portal, I'm gonna come over this, we're gonna do a first pass with our putting it on and then we're gonna come over as it starts to begin to dry. And we're gonna smooth it out a little bit. You know, because as it dehydrates, you know, as it dries out, you're gonna get some more bumps because uh, the water pulls out of it and kind of pulls it down. And so you're gonna get some high and low areas. Some of those high and low areas, you wanna smooth them out as much as you can. So I'm gonna go around and finish this off and I'll show you when I'm done. So sculpt the mold is applied. You can, it's kind of hard to see just because it's, there's not a huge elevation change for this. It is definitely blended in there better than, uh, than, than it would if we just the wood. And we're gonna have some, this is gonna look nice when it's done. You'll get to see the evolution of this through this video. So you can see the driveway. I've made some tire marks, just basically just moving my fingers back and forth there on that masonite. And the reason is, you know, where the tire tracks are going to be is going to be just a little bit lower. And so this is probably unnecessary because I'm going to put ground cover and things on there too. But we're going to want to make sure that there's some grass where the tire marks aren't. So it kind of stands out as like a very uh, minimally driven path. Sort of like you'd see on more of a back road. So I, I smoothed that out so that when I put some dirt or sand down in there, it's going to lay nice and flat and then where the grass will be is a little bit more uneven. So we're going to let this dry. It's going to take quite a bit of time. I might come down in about 20 minutes and try to smooth it out a little bit more, but that'll be a nice base there for the, for the, the house. And then what we'll do is kind of map out where the house is and where we need to put ground cover and then begin to put that down with some, some static grass or some, some ground foams and blend it all together to make it kind of farm homestead. To give you an idea, this was all sculpt and molded here. And so you can see how it's got the brown underneath it. And then I just put some ground foam and some different scenic, you know, ground cover on there. If we come down here, this, again, this is sculpt the mold and you can see where the white comes through. So that gives you a bit of an idea of what I'm trying to avoid. And basically that's the, the sculpt the mold was down and then I just brushed it with a latex paint. Now, obviously I could have you know, done a better job of getting into all those little crevices and things like that. But at the end of the day, our goal is to save time and be efficient with our products. So by mixing the paint in, obviously that white would be more of a brown, so it's gonna blend already. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over it. So it's been drying for about 20 minutes and I've got just another glove on and I've got some water. And what I'm gonna do is just dip my fingers in the water just to get my fingertips wet on the glove. And you don't have to wear a glove. I just use it because it's easier to clean up. And then I'll have to go back upstairs, wash my hands, and so on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over it like this. You can see how it's starting to solidify a little bit. And what happens when it does that is you get these little high parts start to come up. So by getting your fingertips wet a little bit, <clears throat> it rehydrates some of those high areas. And then you can smooth them out. Just like that. You can see where it's turning white, where it's white there, where I moved, removed some for the tire tracks. That's gonna be, you know, it's gonna just shows you that it's drying out. It doesn't take long. Now it will take long to fully cure because obviously deep within there, it takes a while for that, that water to totally dry out. I'm just gonna smooth, come over it smooth out some of those low spots, those dimples, and those high spots. So I'm gonna come over it and do that. We'll let that dry. Might come over it with a, another coat of paint. We'll see maybe some dark acrylics 
and then we can begin doing some ground cover. So I had a little bit of a really dark acrylic brown, so I just decided to use the rest of that and fill this in, and then I had some some plywood still showing, so I just used that, finished it off, and, and came over that brown, and that's gonna be a nice base dirt color. So now what we're gonna do is swing over here to the scenery cart, and we're gonna need this over on the other side. So with the, the paint is still wet, what I'm gonna do is begin to put some ground cover on because the paint will actually hold some of it down. So it'll save me just a little bit of glue, but it'll help me get the first base, the first base down. So what I'm gonna use first is this Brennan's Model Railroading ground cover. This is like a really, really fine product. It's actually what I used for this road. So I wanna use this to blend in the road in the driveway because I did get some sculpt mold on there. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna take a pinch of it gonna put some of that on there and then right around the sides of the driveway just to kind of line that and this is a again this can just be a base we can put some more stuff over, more ground cover over top of it if we have to. And then what we'll do is we'll hit that with either some wet water or I use some rubbing alcohol. And then we'll just put a little bit of watered down matte medium. Or I use some, just some white Elmer's glue that's watered down. And we can begin to add some more different types of ground covers. Next, we're going to use some of the superior sand, and this is the fine stuff. This is actually what I use for the roadway. And so what I'm going to do is just, sometimes you can use a spoon, but we're just going to come back and blend this in. Again, this is what I use for the this little dirt road. And then we'll put it in there where this driveway lane is going to be also. And I can come over with a light brush just to smooth that out. But actually, that doesn't look too bad. That looks pretty good. So I've added some three different types of ground foam. I've done just like the really fine green, then I did the earth tone, and then a thicker foam just around the edges and down around along the road. Now I'm going to hit it with the static grass applicator. So I've put some glue in here. I'm going to put some more just static tack or basically like a white Elmer's. It's not diluted. I'm going to put it on top of the diluted glue so it gives it a stronger consistency. And then I'm going to hit it with the static grass applicator to give it some more dimension. So let's do that now and we'll come back here in a minute. got this, this short static grass on. Now I'm going to come over with a 12 mil static grass just along the edges of the road. And this is new for me. I'm not a static grass master by any means. I've, someone probably already pointed out errors that I've made and how I've applied this, but it's, I've always kind of found it, find it difficult, but I always think it looks so nice when it's done. So I'm going to, I'm doing my best here you know, and so I'll bring it along for the ride. So just along the road, I'm going to add some static tack and then maybe up along the driveway here. And then we're going to add just a little bit of the longer grass. And then what I'll do is I'll come over with my shop vac with a paper towel over the end, or you can use pantyhose if you have some, I don't have any. And that'll collect some of the loose static grass. It'll also help pull it up. But again, I'm just going to come over and just dilute that a hair. What I'll do is that just, it helps spread the glue out too. So you don't have like the lines. So you'll 
you'll see a lot of excess grass laying there. That's just what happens when you use the static grass applicator. You'll see a lot of excess laying there. So we're going to vacuum that up, but we don't want to waste it. So that's why we'll we'll collect it with a paper towel over the end of the shop back and then put it back in the bag. So I'll let that dry for just a minute or two, and then I'll come over it. And when I use the vacuum, just straight vertically above is going to pull the grass up as well if some of it didn't stand up right so away. So I've got my little mini shop pack. And if you don't have this and you're in this hobby, um, you're doing it wrong. You absolutely need to have this. So I'm just going to put the paper towel over the end like that and hold it. Turn this on. <laughs> Turn that off, and then you've got all of this. Now there might be some ground foam in there too, but that's a good amount that you're going to want to collect and reuse another time. And even if it's just a couple, you know, teaspoons, it's 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 scenery products and it's money. So we want to make sure we're saving that. So I'm going to go over the rest of this, and then I'm going to again go over it probably just with the vacuum to try to pull that grass up nice and vertical and then we're going to let it dry so when you open this box up what you get is you get you get two transformer poles you know you've got a transformer here you've got a spool of of wire and then you've got these connectors that you can put i guess next to your house and then you've got a little electrical box also which is pretty neat so i think this would go along the side of your house where the wire would kind of loop into and then you've got your pole here that the transformer would connect to and so we're gonna we're gonna see exactly how how those connect and I'll bring you along for the ride so when I take this out so what we have here is this piece is meant to be cut and then here's your little electrical box and there is a hole in the top that this piece will fit into so what we're gonna do is figure out exactly how high we need that to be compared to where we want our electrical box on our house and then that will just get, this piece gets cut and that'll just get fitted right into that hole like that. And then our wire will just get glued right into there from our transformer pole. Now, the nice thing is for each pole, you have two wires so you can split it. So I'm gonna run one wire to my mill or my cabinet factory, which is a Menards building. And the other one's gonna go to the farmhouse. That's my plan. I don't think I'm gonna run one to the barn just because it's a barn, we could say that it's like oil lamps or whatnot. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna figure out where I want this pole to go. And then we're gonna get this guy cut and put into place. So we're gonna move locations again. So here's this farmhouse from Woodland Scenics and underneath you've got that nice connection to plug this into your lighting system. And I'm gonna plan to do that down the road. So that way this house will light up. But on the on this side, we've got an electrical box and a rope so technically i guess i could run that right to here however the way i have the house sitting you're never really going to see that that part so i guess what i have to decide is do i want to use one of these here on this side where you'll see it this one seemed a little low but it might i don't know so i've got this piece glued in to here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I've got this pole in, the transformer is going to get glued to this pole here. And then we're going to tack the wires, get that to focus. We're going to tack the wires right onto the, these pieces here. So let me go ahead and glue that on the transformer on. We'll get those wires in place and I'll show you what this is going to look like. So we've got the transformer glued on and then the wires are sitting there right now. They're going to get glued onto those little posts. And these wires come into this pole and then they're going to split and so we're going to take one we've got a spool here that comes with this it's going to come run over and get glued right into there and then we'll so we'll measure it cut it and then put it in place the other one once we put the house back in and we have it in its final location then we'll do that one in the meantime the wire will just sit here i'm going to go ahead and plant some of this corn i'm just drilling rows about eight holes about maybe a centimeter and a half or so between each row and then just planting the corn and then i did come over with the vacuum a little bit which pulled up some of that brown because it wasn't totally dry because i'm impatient but we're going to put the corn in and then we can sprinkle some more dirt and brown in there and see what it looks like i'm not gluing the corn in so i can pull it back out if i don't like the way it looks so but the corn is all in i've had some tufts of field grass and just some random spots now i added some trees i'm gonna go ahead and pull this one out so it's easier for us to work in here just set that down and we'll pull this one out also 
what we're gonna do is because this is like a farm or country road, I did add longer grass down here and by the road, but it's all pretty uniform still, that static grass. It's all that really short, like four mil. So I went back and I got some, some seven mil grass. So I believe this is four, that's 12. And then I got a seven. I'm gonna mix it in some patches just to give it some contrasting colors as well and make it look a little bit more uneven. So we're gonna basically just take our static tack and we're gonna put it around in some spots and then we'll hit it with the static grass applicator again. So I'm gonna, I'll do that and then show you the final product. So I've added some more of those, as I said, I added some darker green here and then a little bit over there just to add some contrast. So I'm gonna let that dry. I'll come over it with the, the shop back just to pull it up a little bit more. And again, just add some more inconsistencies in that grass that you'd see on more of a country road. So looking pretty good. This area over here is, I haven't done much to it. I was thinking maybe we'll put another garden in. We've got the cornfield, little pl corn plot. Maybe we'll put some lettuce or something like that. So I'm kind of leaving that blank for now, just with grass. I don't want to put too much static grass down to just rip it back up, put a garden in. So we're going to leave that go for right now. We'll just have to wait and see. It's also kind of a low-lying area. There's a slope here and there. So might just could do some low-lying water or something like that. We'll just have to wait and see. So I'm going to let that dry. And then we'll come over it with the shop back to pull that static grass up. I added a couple more little graft tufts here and there as well. So let that dry. While that dries, I'm going to go work on the truck for the farmhouse. I'm in the back shop here. And I've got this little old Ford pickup. I just picked this up from Strasburg shop. I was really looking for a white pickup, maybe not something that about 10 years newer than, than what this is modeled after, but this is what they had. And so it's about 12 bucks. So I figured I'd pick it up. So what I want to do is make this look like a, not a restored vehicle. Restored. But what I want to do, it's going to be a farm truck for that farm scene that we've been working on. So what I'm going to do is try to weather this and, and my thought is I'm going to hit it with it. Right now it's pretty glossy. So we're going to clean it up. I'm going to hit it with a just a flat, um, basically this true coat flat finish. And just to kind of give it more of a matte. And then what we're going to do is come over it and add some rust. And we'll do some powders. And then we'll hit it again with another coat of the matte. The reason I do the matte first is because it's going to allow those pow powders to stick a little bit more. And... I just think it looks better overall. So I'm going to tape off the windows and hit it with that. And then we'll come back and I'll show you my process. I don't know how, how well that's going to show up here on camera, but that's it with one coat of the mat on it. And it definitely dulls it down. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Just a quick light coat and we'll let it dry. So now what we're going to do is dirty this thing up. First thing we want to do is add some rust. And, and then what we'll do is cover it with some dusty powders. All right, so first thing I do, I've got gloves on here. And I do have this on my little turntable deal that I use for trains. I don't know if I'm going to have to airbrush this or not. What I, I have here is just a weathering pencil. This is like a red primer. And so, you know, we're just going to come over some of these grates. And I'm just using an image that I found on the internet of a 1930 unrestored pickup. You know. And I'm going to base my weathering off of kind of what I see in that image. And it's not going to be in here. So I'm going to just kind of like that. Right, now we're gonna come over with some powder. So I just have a, a mix of a brown powder and I think there's some red in here as well, like some oxide. So I just have a special brush that I just use for this. And, and really what this does, once those other paints are dry, it's gonna make it, you know, the truck just dirty, you know, like it's been on those backcountry roads. And I'm gonna put it on, I always do this over a surface like the paper towel, because then I can just pick more up and 
brush it on. We can come over it with a super heavy coat and then clean it up in certain spots. So there's the powders are on there now. It's really grimed up. I also painted that front bumper. So we're going to hit this with some clear coat again. Again, I, I, my plan was to really grime this thing up. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to hit it with the clear coat, let that dry. And then we're going to come up with some stuff that we can throw in the bed of this truck. Here is the final product for the pickup. Next thing we're going to do is add a fence. All right, next thing we're going to be adding this fence. So I have this wooden Scenix wire fence set or kit. And so we're going to be using this to put a fence in. I need a 16th inch drill bit and my drill to put the posts in. So what we're going to do First, I'll figure out exactly where we want this fence to go. I'm thinking we have it come up to the driveway and then come around the corn, kind of like over this way. And then maybe we'll do a little section on the other side of the driveway also. And then we can put long tufts of grass underneath where the fencing is. I don't know if we'll carry it all the way up the road or maybe just have it like break down or something. Like it was a fence at one point in time and just kind of deteriorated and fell apart. Fence is in. So what I did was I started at that corner and worked my way around and it ends just at the corner of the house back there behind those sunflowers. Now the fence itself you can put like corner pieces in and I put a brace in over here at the front. Let me get this to focus. See that brace and then a gate where it kind of pins in right next to that and then just kind of you know it's just kind of pulled over on this side so the gates open for the driveway to be available. I don't have a fence extending around the other side so what I could do is buy another one of these. Uh, obviously, I didn't have enough. This was the whole set. But I have a bunch of corners, and I have one more gate. If I swing over here, I have one more gate piece, and I've got a bunch of these corners, and I just didn't use the corners. So I could put another gate piece on the other side of the driveway, but I think what I'll do is at some point I'll just get another one of these fences, and I'll put it on the other side of the driveway. Let's get this focus again for you over by the mailbox and swing it this way and then maybe have it come over and then just kind of die off over on that other side or something. We'll, we'll see. For now, this looks good. What I did then also is I came over it with a brown, a brown paint. So if you look at, that's what it looks like out of the box. Man, it's not focusing. So if you look here, this is what it looks like out of the box, that, that gray. I just came over it with a brown acrylic. This guy's a little crooked. Ooh, straighten him out. So I just kind of came over them with a, a brown, like a, not so much a dry brush, definitely wetter than a dry brush, but this gives it some contours. So you can see there's a little bit of gray maybe coming through on those posts where it's starting to weather and turn gray. But for the most part, they're more of a brown. What that does is it also contrasts it with the, the wiring as well. Because if we look here, the wire is the same plastic color as the posts, which is kind of silly. So that's why I just painted them. I actually should have done it while I, I didn't have them in. I waited, and then once I had them installed, I came over and just quick brushed them with the paint. So they're not glued in. Okay, they're just, I used the 16-inch drill bit and just put them in their place. They're not drilled in right now. What I do want to do is come over. I want to get some, you can get like grass tufts that are in lines, like for fence rows. I thought I had some, and I can't find it. I'm going to keep looking, but I'd love to put that underneath some of these where, you know, you just haven't weed whacked or anything in a little while. So this scene here is really starting to come together. I think we're just about done for this video. This will continue to evolve like everything else. Another thing I did while I had some extra brown acrylic, I painted the rails here. I had not weathered them. I like to spray these with like a camo brown outside before I installed them. I just didn't do it when I installed my layout. Uh, didn't think about it until I had everything in. So I just came over this with an acrylic on the inside 
and outside of the rails with a brown and that just dulls that up so it's not quite as shiny so when you get a picture it looks a little bit more of a the rails aren't blinding you with reflection which is kind of nice